Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a brand new feature has been added to Hearts of Iron 4. And you know what? I actually really, really love it. It's called a Mayo, which is a military industrial organization. And you can do that for tanks, planes, airplanes, as well as small guns, small arms. It's a really cool feature. It really is amazing. And the more you dig into it, the more you see some of the bonuses, it feels so insanely strong to take advantage of the traits. Now in the game, there's a lot of traits, okay? Too many to go through. So you make your own mind up how important they are, okay? However, one little hidden feature that no one's talking about is policies. Now, policies are a special bonus that you can spend a little bit of political power for and it'll get sometimes some insane bonuses and some not so insane bonuses. What I'd like to do with you two guys today is make a tier list. Oh, the tier list matter is back, boys. And we're going to do a tier list of policies for Myos. In summary, Myos policies can be unlocked with 25 political power and when they leech level 6. Alrighty then. So first of all, cutting corners. I like anything that can increase your production quantity of vehicles. And by making the overall cost lower, you can potentially increase the cost significantly. Uh, guys, I'm going to be totally real with you. I, really, I love this one. I think this is really awesome. I think when you're in a situation when you want to pump out as many as possible, um, this is the best one to do it. However, losing these stats does sting a little bit, but none of them are that particularly that high that are actually that too much painful. Now, if you're a multiplayer broyo, you probably want to be stacking all your stats to the to the sky, to the moon. Uh, but in this situation, 10% production cost is really, really strong. In this situation, cutting corners is really good. All right, next up. Factory applied camouflage. Uh, this increases defense by 2%. Tanks don't tend to have a lot of defense unless you specifically tech into that, but even then the defense isn't very high. Tanks are more about breakthrough and 2% breakthrough uh, is very, very low. Uh, overall, what you get from this is so unbelievably small. I don't really think it's worth it overall. Remember, these are percentage increases. So if your tank has 100 breakthrough, 2% breakthrough will give you 102 breakthrough. Overall, those amounts aren't very high. And for instance, if a tank doesn't have a lot of stats to begin with, 5% of nothing is still nothing. In this circumstance, this is a very small bonus. I really don't think this is worth it. However, once again, if you're looking to go to the to the moon, it doesn't really feel like it's worth it. The heavy pantry cranes. So this is production efficiency cap. So this overall increases the maximum amount of production that you can have. So for instance, in this case, this will increase the raw cap from 50% to 55%. This is two things. It means the maximum amount of production cost is higher. And it also means the production efficiency grows a little bit faster as well. That's like a hidden mechanic. Can you see that there? Base daily gain 0.24%. So it, honestly, hand on heart, it's basically a flat improvement in production of a vehicle. However, it's not plus five factory output meaning it applies immediately it will take time to apply it's basically something that has to be grinded and applied to basically it goes a little bit quicker casting specialist plus two percent hardness this one works a little bit differently than you'd expect so as an example it would make this light tank go from 80 percent hardness to 82 percent hardness and what it just basically means is in combat it will take less damage from soft attack but more damage from hard attack the soft attack is more plentiful so it's less likely to take overall damage less in combat i think this one's really op particularly if you're min maxing hardness and if you're going for those tanks with a max amount of hardness it's one of those kind of like i like stat stacking and i think for that reason i think it is kind of strong once again kind of niche op though armor welding specialists tanks that use this myo will gain plus five percent armor you know tanks that have armor I, I kind of what tanks are all about right and you get to take advantage of the bonus of destroying the org of the division you're fighting 50 percent quicker therefore making them break quicker ending the combat quicker it's kind of difficult to see sometimes if five percent on top of what you've already got is actually worth it once again i don't really hold this one a high regard it's nice if you're stacking armor a bit like the hardness but look at all the armor bonuses you've got as part of the traits anyway is five percent five percent five percent so i just think to myself like man of all the bonuses you get from policies I feel like this is relatively tame. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's terrible. But once again, it just doesn't really turn me on because it's just not anything different from a regular trait. All right, next up. Experimental development teams gives you a research bonus of 20% whilst using this Mayo. Now this 20% is huge, okay? Huge. Anything that gives you a 20% research bonus is amazing. Because remember, 
This one gives 3%, this one gives 4%, 5%, about 8%, 8%. If you were to add up all these research bonuses, you're getting just less than what you would get from all the researchers anyway, for free, with no extra cost. The only issue with this one is because it requires a level 6 Mayo, which tends to come in like 1941 or later, or maybe even 1939 if you really push it, you've kind of already researched everything that you already needed anyway. So you're not really beelining to some certain research because you know how you fall works in different phases you have the build up phase then you have the war phase and then you can have a late game phase it tends to be more of the mid game and late game that you take advantage of the policies but what tends to happen is that this would benefit you absolutely massively in an early game scenario but you can't use it early game I, you know what i'm gonna interject my personal opinion here i think this ranks really low for me and I think the reason why it lags really low for me is, is once again, it's something that only benefits you early game, but you can never select it early game. So what's the point? Mechanical genius plus 10% reliability. The multiplayer guys are probably screaming right now. Like, Ree, re, reliability is a matter. The big advantage of having 90% plus reliability is that when a vehicle breaks down, there's a chance to have it recovered. Uh, I'll give an example. If you go here in the equipment log, you can see lost in combat lost in attrition but if a vehicle has a high reliability it can be recovered and if you are battle planning which you never do in multiplayer well you can sometimes i guess you will be using losing a lot of equipment because battle planning is very harsh but once again it's one of those kind of it is effective in scenarios niche scenarios but it, there are other ways of fixing this kind of specific problem so i'm going to go for d tier once again, I don't think this is really applicable why you'd ever go for it. Vertical integration. This potentially is mad OP in multiplayer games. Most multiplayer games result in an end game where all the resources in the world are consumed and players can't make any more mills because otherwise they'll be suffering from too high a production penalties. It does two things. It reduces the overall production cost by 10%, so 10% less resources. So if you're using 100 steel, you only need uh, 90 steel. Significant amount, particularly about certain resources that are very important. It's kind of like a, a rolling lose if you wait because it, it benefits you initially but if you are losing this is not really a good one to go for i suppose if you're in a winning scenario and you want to hold on to as many resources as you can vertical integration is is the best of the best but once again i do think he's a little bit niche so there's this part of me deep down in my heart and soul he doesn't want to give this an s tier he actually wants to give an a tier i mean it's strong it's op but once again if, if you're not playing multiplayer you're playing single player Ruthless Contracts is at the very top, and I think this is one that is the crappiest of them all. Uh, the reason why this is rubbish is it increases the funds. Funds is XP for a mile, which unlocks extra trait slots. Well, the traits are great, they're OP and everything. Uh, but the problem with it is that you need a level 6 Mayo to select this. But level 6, you kind of already completed almost half of the trait list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. So at level 6, you've already got 6 traits, and there's only 9 traits that are selectable. So, man, this is so crap. That is so absolutely rubbish. It's pointless, isn't it? No, there's no doubt about it, guys. That is an E tier. That is, don't ever select that. That's just absolutely pointless. Yeah, I've, 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 uh, I've reconsidered what I previously said. Uh, heavy gantries that are absolute dog shit. I feel like there's just way, way better options out there. And once again, it only applies to heavy tanks in that scenario. So it kind of feels pointless to me. No, that's pointless. Assembly line optimizer. So not only is this giving production efficiency cap for everything, but it's also giving production efficiency gain. So, okay. Cap increases the maximum amount of production, but it also very subtly in the back end increases production efficiency gain because anything that's hot further away from the base amount will increase the overall speed. So cap has a hidden bonus. It increases speed, but also with this one increases speed some more by 5% extra gain. But on top of that, it applies to everything. Everything. So anytime this Mayo is used, which in this case is armor technology, which I think is lights, mediums, and heavies, and all the variants as well. Uh, this is like basically gantry cranes more strong. I think I'm going to go with assembler and optimizers for that one. Because I think if you were looking to optimize your production costs with, with the B, I think that's definitely worth. So I guess we now hop it onto ships. Oh my goodness, ships. Ships. So we start off with the battleship one, which affects cruisers and battleships. Let's see if we can find any new ones. Yeah, there are a few different ones. So remember, ruthless contracts we've already established as dog shit. It's the same way with tanks. And also vertical integration is very, very strong. I suppose you could argue in this circumstance that reliability might be more effective. So this is a worthwhile mention. Minus 5% production cost 
for ships that's actually pretty decent you know because a lot of the time the biggest issue with ships is that they just take too long to produce and if you're making a ship that's very 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 expensive which is a big fat battleship with all the big batteries on them five percent production cost not only uh means the overall production cost is less but it also means that the, the time to produce that ship is five percent less as well so what it's basically saying there is, it, is it's basically producing the ship five percent quicker that tended to be a little bit more effective than i originally thought so you know what with that in mind i'm gonna shift that one up i think that really does apply particularly for heavy expensive single item uh pieces of equipment such as ships as well as planes so i think that's really worthwhile mentioning space efficient design gives 25 percent extra range for all ships that's insane 25 percent battleships have already got an absolutely insane range produce this battleship and look that's the range so an extra 25 percent on top of that i guess we're going to touch the labrador sea aren't we maybe the mid-atlantic but as you imagine if you, as you improve these further and further you get insane range anyway because one of the late game strategies if you want to invade america is just to use battleships only to do naval projection and therefore use the range of battleships to get further um i think if you're making a brand new ship definitely a good idea um however if you're refitting it doesn't seem like it's applicable uh i'm not gonna lie though uh if you're making the most optimal ships uh range is super important once again when you make battleships you want the range you want naval projection you know i'm convincing myself more and more it's definitely an a tier that one stable gunnery platforms use your imagination here guys the paradox devs have not supplied us with the, the base stats for this what is the chance of light attack hitting its target what is the chance of a heavy battery hitting its target what is the base amount no idea no idea there's nowhere in the stats in the game that probably is not on the front end anyway that tells you the chance of it hitting there's no chance it doesn't let you know anywhere nowhere it lets you know so the change is the way a few of the mechanics works so if you look at fire control they now increase uh hit chance by 10 percent 7.5 percent but once again what's the base hit chance i don't know i don't know what the base amount is so it, it, we've got to use our imaginations here i'm going to just stick this here and put it in the middle of the seat here i just don't know what the amounts are so i can't judge if it's strong or not strong uh, i feel like it might be strong to stack lots of hit chance for all of your gear and if you get that stat really high it would be effective I have no testing on that, so I have no idea. Okay, the next one is the Great Sea Keeping. This is another example where I feel like if you stack the stats with it, they're gonna be really strong. So one thing I will notice is one of the most important stats for carriers. This one is competing with this one, I've just realized, for deck size plus one, I've just realized. Carriers can't launch their planes if the weather's bad. If there's a storm, they can't launch them. And there's some situations where a big battle fleet of capitals meets a big battleship fleet of uh, of carriers. And sometimes the battleships will win because there's a storm happening. And therefore, the carriers can't launch their planes. And in that case, the battleships just demolish the carriers. Um, so anything that reduces weather penalty for carriers is mad OP. And there's also another one here, this one reduces bad weather penalty by 40 percent so are you reducing overall 90 percent the bad weather penalty that basically means that carrier planes don't have a penalty practically for operating in storms which from my humble opinion i feel like it's really strong as well <laughs> once again if you're fighting in a storm it's good but if you're not fighting in a storm is it really that good go with c tier next one oh my spicy favorite one so if you're a nation Anything that reduces the overall production cost of a tank or a ship will also increase the time it is we oh, reduce the time it is to produce that ship. So it doesn't make the raw costs go down, but it also reduces the amount of time it is to produce that. And once again, if you're a minor power, or every nation like Germany or Italy, and you want to build up a big fleet and have it dominate, anything that reduces the cost of a ship overall. It's going to be worthwhile and if you are let's say a nation that's locked into the mediterranean you don't even need range so this is kind of pointless anyway honestly i think this is really strong this one i think this is one of my personal favorites once again it needs a level five it'd be nice to unlock it immediately but from my humble opinion i think this is really good from my opinion on this one if you're looking to build your fleet up and you need to catch up to the rest of the world this is the one you want to go for uh the only one instance is if you like germany you're trying to get over the atlantic you maybe want the range so maybe the alternative instead of this one you want the uh space efficiency design that's the only real difference really but overall if if you wanted to play catch up that's the one you want to go for yeah all right again this is a bizarre 
game but we start with germany usa england then we're into norway norway has a unique policy specifically for its merchant and escort ships oh actually no tell a lie it's for everything all of their miles for ships have a unique policy and it's a weird one it's a really weird one the reason it's a weird one is it specifically requires you to go for norwegian engineering which i think is locked behind the communist path yeah it is it's here so specifically you have to do so not only is it locked behind a national focus which is unusual but it's also locked behind the permanent industrial revolution this is kind of funny the fact that it's communist as well <laughs> so it decreases the resources needed by 10 percent, which from what we've noticed is kind of op i guess because it's like vertical integration because it's a good replacement for that so it's a better version of inter vertical integration but it also increases research research for the Mayo by 10%. Not as good as the 20% uh, of that one. It's kind of this middle ground where it kind of does both. I suppose the only downside to this one is all the bonuses are fantastic. But the only downside is it's locked behind ideology and a national focus. So when are you going to be a Norwegian communist? Put your hands up if you're a Norwegian communist. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> it's really bizarre. So I kind of want to say that the stats are good. But at the end of the day, when, it, when are you becoming a Norwegian communist? <laughs> it's so stupid. Um, yeah. Anyway, next up, planes. Let's start from the bottom. So standard 20%. No, I disagree with this one, actually. Because what would happen with this one is there's not really that much tech for planes late game, is there really? Because the, the, the most ideal technologies are the 1940 chassis, survivability studies range improvements heavy machine guns and engine three those are the ones that are like the most crucial ones i don't really feel like it's any better than it wants or so i'm just gonna keep it the same grade as it once was before mechanical genius reliability i feel like reliability applies to planes more than it does some a lot of other quasi's equipment because accident chance for planes is very 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 high i have a feeling this would be really effective for planes but once again we'd have to do a trial run of 80 percent reliability exercising your planes over a year and then an 80 percent 90 percent reliability with this one to actually see the difference like for like and see the differences i'll say one thing though vertical integration is massive for planes aluminium late runs out late game rubber runs out late game uh so having that for keep your plane production up is, is worth it and tends a lot of the time because planes are so expensive you tend to put a lot of mills on them so the production cost is very very high so instead of getting a 10% reduction by cutting corner and loading a bunch of stats, you've got a 5% reduction. I think this really is effective for planes because planes tend to be very expensive and uh, anything to reduce the overall production cost is really worth it. Because what you could do without only stack that one with the continuous focus of air production. So a 5% and a 10%. So overall, getting that plane production nice and high is really worth it. So modular assembly is actually pretty good. I'm actually probably going to put that as an A tier. I think it's really essential for planes. Planes need to keep that production cost down because planes, like game, are super expensive. All right, then. Plus five agility. This is really cool. Agility is a really important stat, particularly for most importantly uh, for dogfighting. It kind of is defense in the air. Um, it kind of works coincided with air defense, but then it also works with speed maximum speed too adding as an extra uh, defense as well um i think it applies more speed when it comes down to bombers because they have to do really quick bombing runs and land the bombers without getting intercepted and if they can outrun the fires they're in a better situation but agility is basically dog fighting defense basically now, if you wanted to get an extra edge and lose less planes in combat extra defense for your planes is really worth it of course again i feel like this is really op as well anyway the final one is perfect finish increasing maximum speed by five percent and production cost by five percent i don't know the impact of speed on the overall performance of planes my presumption is speed is very important for bombers to be able to do their runs effectively and then outrun fighter planes however five percent production cost of a very expensive plane like a bomber really really hurts once again testing is required however my instincts are telling me that's not a very good one i'm gonna go with that one as perfect finish there's no S tier. <laughs> the perfect tier list always has a nice even distribution of the top to the bottom, you know? You have the ones at the bottom, you're like, don't ever pick those. And then S tier, it's like, man, you should always be picking those ones. Do you know what? This is actually an example, and there's nothing here that particularly really runs ahead and stands out and says, that is a no-brainer, and you should always select that. Which is, from my humble opinion, 
I think it is a good job by the devs. Um, a lot of the time, it's usually always a no-brainer. In this case, there really isn't anything that stands out more than all of those. There should be no E-tiers as well. So everything should be balanced and squeezed in. But I will say 100%, Ruthless Contracts, absolute poo. Hang on, Heavy Gantry Cranes is at the very bottom? Oh, it's not. It's not. It's at least c tier because it, it, it applies differently for the different myos doesn't it if you were going to push me into a corner and manhandle me and say to me dave you have to pick an s tier you have to pick an s tier then it's vertical integration however for my opinion i like how the paradox devs have balanced it by me making you have a bigger penalty if you do run out of resources so it's in a weird way they have balanced it in a really cool way here we go that's it. That's the tier list. If you guys enjoyed tier list? Let me in the comments below. Oh, don't forget, like and subscribe if you don't really want to help out the channel financially. But like and subscribe will basically help YouTube find its audience and hopefully give this channel some love. Guys, I love you. I love you. Love you. Have a good day.